Hi, uh, my name is Wilson. Today we'll look at how to tune a lookup transformation. So in the agenda we covered cache lookups and uncached lookups. We can look at how to tune them. So first let's take a look at the majority of the use cases with the cache lookup. And uh, so I'm going to see like uh, differentiate the two different main time intervals. That's uh, the time consuming part for lookup transformation. The first thing is the time taken to build a lookup cache. And uh, that's the initial part of it, where it needs to issue a SQL to the database and uh, fetch the result cell and, and, and uh, create your lookup cache. So, um, so it involves your query performance. You, you have to make sure you have a better tuned query, which should return you the, which should execute much faster and return you the result set. And then once the result is re uh, returned back, depending on your data set size, uh, it needs to either cache in memory, which is much faster, but most of the time you cannot hold every uh, every data into the memory itself. So you need to cache it to the disk. So in your disk is slow, your disk I/O is going to impact your performance of your lookup for building the lookup cache. So the second major part or the second major uh, phase of a lookup is processing the lookup itself. Again, since it involves a disk cache, disk I/O. If the disk is slow, your processing of your lookup is going to be much, much slower. And then it also, the other factor is your size of lookup cache. Uh, if your cache size is really huge, and uh, it needs to, in that case, it needs to uh, traverse back and forth within the cache files to find a match for each and every incoming rows. In those cases, your size of the lookup cache is going to impact your performance of your lookup transformation. The third thing is input row order. So uh, we talked about this thing on size of the cache. So let's say your size of the cache is huge. If you 100 gig of data you're caching and you're processing 1 million rows. Uh, in this case, lookup has two different caches, index and data cache. The index cache is uh, based on your condition ports. And uh, uh, and the, the row order, if it is not based on the condition ports, then what it do is it, uh, it needs to uh, traverse back and forth. So first thing is like, let's say your cache size is 100 gig and then your memory are configured for the lookup is 100 MB. So uh, the data, like the lookup will fetch like 100 MB of data into the memory, like how many other pages it can fit into the 100 MB, it will fetch it in memory. And whenever an input row comes in, it will try to match it, let's say, um, to find if that particular input row is in memory or not. If it is not in memory, then what it will do is it will fetch that particular corresponding page from the disk, fetch it into memory, find a match, and then proceed further. If the first, if for the first row, it does like that. Second row, it comes in. Again, for the second row, is not since you are not ordered based on the condition ports, the page that is in memory is not going to hold that second incoming row. There's a possibility the second row will uh, not present in memory itself. So in that case, there will be miss in memory. It needs to go to the database, uh, sorry, to the disk, Fetch the new page, fetch it into memory. So there is going to be a lot more swapping uh, of your pages from the disk into memory. So there will be a seek operation done on the disk and then read operation done on the disk, which is costlier. Your disk I/O is more, going to be much costlier than a memory operation. So if you have that input rows ordered based on your condition ports, your hit on the hit in memory will be uh, much higher, and then it will reduce the uh, hit on your uh, your uh, your number of peak swaps and then the disk I/O would be much reduced in this case. So and the fourth thing is lookup memory size itself. So if you have a smaller memory allocated for your lookup, the amount of pages it can store in memory is very less. That's where like and if you have a larger memory then you can store much of the pages in memory which will find a match. So these are the four factors which can impact your performance of your uh, processing your lookup transformation. So we talked about size in most of the cases. Next thing is let's look up uh, what contributes to the size of the lookup. So as I stated, there are two caches, index cache and data cache. And uh, index cache is uh, is directly, uh, is determined based on the number of rows in your lookup plus and it into the precision of each condition ports. So it's directly the, prop uh, you can see that there is a direct relationship between your precision that you're defining in your lookup transformation and the cache size. Similarly, your output ports precision determines your data cache size. So whatever output ports are projected out and which are based from the database or the lookup 
it's going to form the data cache. Okay. These questions, like in power center, there is only string. There is not the variable string concept is not there. So let's say you defined a port of 100, 100, 100 precision, and but the data is only like 10, 10 bytes. In that case, power, in, in power center, it's going to allocate like 100 bytes of data in the disk uh, to hold that 10 MB of uh, data. So the record size is going to be all uh, fixed so that it, the processing would be much faster. So in this case, if you have defined the precision way too high, that's going to impact your performance of your lookup because your lookup cache is going to be high, the number of records based into the memory is low, and that's going to impact your performance. And let's take a simple example uh, uh, in this case. So this is a, one of the lookup, and then this is a condition port called source uh, condition port, which matches like source value is then are equal to in source value. Let's let's take a look into the source value column. So from the lookup, it says it's a precision 150. Whereas input row, which is source value, which is a string, and it's set to 50. So you see here the input value is 50. Uh, the input precision is 50, whereas you're matching against a 150 byte record, which is like three times. So um, if you are correct, the precision of the source value should be 50, uh, which would have a lesser, uh, which would store three different, uh, three three columns, three records in uh, in place of one. Okay. So, and if you take further look into this, even the input is like, though it is defined as 50, um, we, we see that the input is coming at, this is the unconnected lookup we are calling and then we are passing a natural account. Uh, and this natural account is defined as 25, uh, 25 in this particular transformation. And if, even if we drill it down further in this case, we see that natural account is derived uh, from another uh, transformation and the natural account can only be five, five bytes long. So if we change this precision to five bytes, for this particular lookup transformations, we would we, we can store 30, uh, 30, 30 fields in case of one. So you are going to reduce your shrink your uh, lookup size uh, and 30 times. You are going to shrink the lookup size, and that's going to get you a much much better performance on the lookup. Okay, so that's how your precision. If you if you make sure you have the right precision fit for the lookups your performance of the lookup transformation is going to be much, much faster. The next thing is uh, a simpler example on a range lookup. And uh, we came across in one case is where the range lookup was performing slower, uh, which is the case because it, it's a range lookup. It needs to search within a range. It's going to uh, take longer time than an equal join. Okay. So in, in, in when you're using range lookups, it's always like push the conditions uh, that would produce lesser data set up front so that the range can be performed on a range can be performed on a lesser data set. For an example, here uh, the same same transformation. If you take a look, so this is a range lookup where you say the source value should be less than or equal to uh, the input value, and then again the target value should be greater than or equal to a certain value, and then there is another condition which is category code equal to in category code. So in this case, if, if we push that category code, the equal join up front, uh, it could uh, produce a lesser result set within which uh, rings they should be performed. So this is one simpler uh, tuning tip which can um, make use of in any cases, like uh, if you have more than one condition, so if you, if you think that the condition is going to produce your lesser data set, which can be operated on the next one, uh, we push it out as the first condition. So it's it's normal practice even in occurring uh, occurring terms. Okay. So the next we'll move on to uncached lookups. Uh, uh, so uncached lookup is exactly we are going to run the SQL for each and every row of the database. So it's directly proportional to your uh, query tuning. How, how how efficient your query is, your performance is going to be uh, that faster. Um, but in particular cases. Uh, in a DB2 case, uh, for uncached lookup, for every its default auto commit is enabled. So for every row processing, it needs to be committing the uh, committing the records. So um, that can cause a slowness, and uh, we have it for a reason. In cases even a select can hold a lock on the on the table, and we do not want that to 
cause any tick locks as a result like we we have enabled auto commit by default but if you think that okay uh, I, I i know for sure i'm just doing a select there is no way there's going to be a deadlock for this particular table you can go ahead and disable your auto commit and by disabling your auto commit you can see much better performance on an cache lookup uh, especially with db2 on mainframes we have seen this and uh, and, and this can uh, get you a better performance okay to uh, choose your uh, that's all about it uh, but uh, usually like general practice to decide when to use it and cache and you know, cache lookup transformation so um, thank you for your time guys thank you for listening into this um, so feel free to send send your uh, feedbacks to support videos at informatica.com also you can tweet to us at twitter.com info support thank you everyone thanks for listening